$90,000 Rivian versus $40,000 Colorado. How much money do you need to spend to go off-road? Today we have these two trucks here at our favorite Ironclads Trail in Colorado to find out. Starting things off, I'm already in four low and um, I've got some really nice gauges here. I do like being able to see my pitch and roll steering angle. It's just nice to have some extra information. Now Andre's had this truck up here before and I know he didn't have any issues with clearing that chin spoiler up front. So I'm just gonna take it slow, let the four wheel drive system do its thing in terrain mode here and uh, shouldn't have any issues. Yeah, pretty good. Now I gotta say, the, uh, the sight lines here are a little iffy. It's got a pretty big boxy tall hood, so it's a little hard to see over the front of this Colorado. But in terms of capability, G80 kicked in back there, got me over the rocks, so really not bad. I'm gonna right away just go ahead and go into my highest suspension height. I'm riding on air suspension, so I do have the ability to give myself a little more clearance a little better approach angle up front. And why not do that as we're coming up to these steep ledges here? So about to come up the first one. And not a problem at all. I'm liking these tires so far. They seem to have really good grip in this pretty loose dirt. Obviously a very different approach from the truck cases driving. This is obviously independent suspension at all four corners. This has a motor at all four corners. No solid axle to get hung up on stuff like that Colorado. So far so good. So uh, now it's on to the Razor Rocks. Today I'm representing Andre's Chevy Colorado because he is on his way to Moab to shoot a different series. And this is a Trail Boss version of the Chevy Colorado, which gets you a few extra goodies. One of the biggest ones that you can tell from standing right next to the truck are these Goodyear Wrangler tires. These are about 32 inch tires. They're pretty aggressive. And this truck also has about a two inch lift over a regular Colorado that gives it about 9.6 inches of ground clearance. Now, a couple disadvantages of this Trail Boss are this chin that hangs fairly low, although it is tucked pretty close to the tires, so not a ton of overhang. But my biggest concern with this setup is the fact that we don't have any substantial skid plates under here, and I wish we did. We do, however, have a G80 rear locker, which is not as good as a selectable locker, but it's a lot better than nothing. Here in the center screen of the Chevy Colorado, we've got some really good information. You can see your steering angle. You can see what setting your transfer case is in. You can see a lot of your temperatures. You can see your pitch and your roll. So they give you some great info here to have for driving off road. But for the most part, this is a pretty old school vehicle. It's solid rear axle and it's just coil springs. There's no air suspension here. It's nothing too fancy, but sometimes that simplicity is good. Now we do have a number of different drive modes here, including off-road, tow haul, terrain, and normal, but I'm gonna keep this in terrain because that's gonna be the best mode for me doing some more intense crawling. Now it's always a little hard to tell how these obstacles actually look in person when you're seeing stuff on camera, but this feature, the Razor Rocks, which is our next obstacle, is essentially at shoulder height for me, um, if not even higher, getting up to the top of the rocks there because there's this pretty big ditch essentially that I'm standing in. And that's the reason that you get super articulated. Now, one of the things about this feature is that having a selectable locker makes a huge difference. This Colorado Trail Boss only has the G80. It's not a selectable locker. So it's not gonna be the easiest thing to get up here. Andre has gotten this up an easier uh, line, kind of sticking to the left here. So, you know, we'll try and replicate that. We know it's 100% possible, but there's a bit of a difference between Andre risking his truck and me risking his truck. All right, Andre, let's see if I can't do your truck justice uh, while also keeping it in good shape. Now, 
I do have to be pretty selective with the line that I take into this because <laughs> his truck has that chin spoiler so I can't take it too head on which means I am going to get very articulated coming up this and right about now we're going to hit the point where until that G80 locks in I am not going to have enough traction but just like that we are making it up here oh. Sorry, Andre. Uh, framed out a little bit, but <laughs> uh, did get up it actually without too much wheel spin. Because typically when we come up here with the G80, there's a lot of rocking back and forth and wheel spin. Uh, that time managed to get up it pretty, pretty smooth. Uh, if I went to the brake a little bit, I, I probably wouldn't have framed out so hard, but. Um, yeah, once you kind of have that momentum, it's also nice to keep it because that's going to help carry you up the rocks. You know, it's hard to take the exact same line every time we come up here. There's driver error all the time, but I think you took a pretty good line that time. Yeah, momentum helped you. That was one of the easier climbs we've had up that. Was it frame or axle that hit? I almost think it was your diff, but we have a yeah. camera back there, so I'm well, sure. Yeah, we'll know. <laughs> yeah, we'll know. We'll play it in slow, well, slow motion hell, for we can we can probably see it. Yeah. Looks like uh, right in the center of the diff. Luckily, <laughs> luckily not fuel tank. <laughs> so there is a little mark right there uh, in the center of the diff that you can see. Sorry about that, Andre. I'll get you a can of black spray paint. Uh, luckily, not the tank. So I would uh, I would rather impact there than here. Still. I'm not going to have that problem in the Rivian. <laughs> no, that's true. And I'm representing the Rivian R1T, the all-electric off-roader. And man, this truck is expensive. First of all, it's the quad motor all-wheel drive. So the most powerful 835 horsepower version you can get. It's also got the middle battery size, but that's the only battery you can get with the quad motor Rivian. And really what's helping me out today is the all-terrain package on this. Most of the Rivians come on 21 inch wheels, but if you get this all terrain option, it goes down to a 20 inch wheel and you get some beefier all terrain tires. Now underneath the Rivian looks pretty good. First of all, it's completely flat, so I should slide over rocks pretty well, but that's a pretty thick skid plate right there and it goes along the entire underside. So I am not worried about puncturing a battery at all. Now, as far as tech goes, obviously very advanced in this Rivian. It blows that Chevy out of the water. First of all, 360 degree cameras, front view. You have a rear view and a new bed view camera too that just came out with an over the air update. But there's a lot of new stuff in here with that update as well. So previously, this is kind of what the system looked like. You had these modes over here, although they did kind of change the layout of it a little bit, but this is all new with this new update. So now you can see exactly what wheels are getting power and how much power they're getting. Uh, you can see the elevation, trip computer, compass. So just a lot of stuff here that you can go through um, and makes you feel like you're driving a much more modern off-roader than that Colorado. And also lots of tech to play around with. So of course all your on-road modes, but if you go to off-road, you've got a ton of stuff to go through here. So all-terrain, rock crawl, we have a soft sand mode, we have a rally mode, and then a drift mode as well. And you can change the settings in all of those too. And that's a ton of modes and you get all those modes with this quad motor all wheel drive version of the Rivian. Some of the lower motor options, you get a little less modes, but this one has pretty much everything and the price reflects that. This is over $93,000. All right, I'm about to go up the Razor Rocks. First, I'm gonna switch into my rock crawl mode because that gives me my hold mode so when I come off throttle it'll kind of hold the brakes for me but I'm gonna bump it back up into the highest setting uh, that way I have as much clearance as possible all right inching up to the razor rocks and starting to climb up Definitely losing a little bit of traction. Seeing if the all wheel drive system can figure it out. It's definitely sending a lot of power to that left rear motor. 
and I just had to step in it a little more and I figured it out. Not exactly smooth. Come on. My foot is so far into this throttle pedal right now. Okay, so I'm on the floor. Really? I am floored. Interesting. Wonder, can you uh, roll back just slightly and bump into it? Need a little more of a bump. Am I bottomed out? Am I s sitting on something? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it is sitting on the rocks. I think definitely the the line that, that you picked is, uh, I think, a bit harder than the line that I did in the uh, Colorado. We'll try and change our angle a little bit. Motor temps definitely climbed a little bit. They're dropping back down, but looks like they got up around 240 degrees. Readjusted a little bit. Now we're gonna try and climb up this. And yeah, with a little bit of a different line, we made it up. But definitely wasn't super controlled and comfortable. I'm also surprised too um, at how much slip there there was really. Uh, you, I mean, for a lot of that had a, two tires on the ground that weren't really seeing a ton of power. Um, I mean, this thing is still a beast. It's got tons of clearance. Um, you know, it's got tons of power, a lot of traction uh, in theory, but it's definitely also a pretty heavy beast. It's very heavy and you could definitely feel that. And I think maybe the motors got a little hot and that's why I was foot to the floor and it wasn't doing all that much. Um, but nevertheless, it, it made it up. It just, I think I think the, the wind goes to the, the Colorado on that one. Yeah, I mean, the, the light lightweight small truck, it was kind of just able to scamper over it because, you know, not a lot of weight to haul up those big rocks. This Chevy Colorado Trail Boss does really have a lot of capability, especially for the money. It's about $41,000, I think $41,600, the way that Andre spec'd it. And this is a pretty base level truck. This particular one famously doesn't even have cruise control, which is kind of crazy. But all that aside, it is a good bit of capability out of this for the money. I will say that definitely the ride quality is still a little trucky and that's totally fair because this is designed to haul around things and pull trailers. I wouldn't expect it to ride like a, I don't know, like a Land Rover or uh, some of the smoother vehicles that we've taken on some of these trails here in Colorado. But uh, it's just worth noting, if you're going to spend a lot of time driving off-road and maybe you don't necessarily need the truck kind of things as much, the ride quality is something to consider. Um, but again, as far as trucks go, especially compared to HD trucks, it's really not bad. Um, it's just a little bit bumpier than some other vehicles. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of capability, a lot of traction from these Goodyear Wrangler tires. A uh, good bit of clearance, having that G80, super nice, all in all. There's not a ton to complain about here with the Colorado, especially price considered. All right, now before I head up, truth or dare, I'm gonna switch back into the all-terrain mode and I'm gonna go to the high setting. I don't need the highest clearance right now and that'll make the ride a little softer. I'm still in the ride feel soft mode, uh, but lowering the suspension a little will make it even a little smoother. Now I always love when I get the chance to hit the trail in an electric off-roader because it's a really cool experience unlike off-roading in a gas vehicle. First of all, you can hear all the nature around you, you can hear you know rocks crunching underneath you, uh, and you just feel more connected to nature. But it's not just that. The other thing is you can hear what the vehicle's doing. You can hear when tires are losing traction and uh, just makes off-roading a little easier and a little more peaceful too. Now we're coming up to this rock that Case always likes to go straight over, so we'll take the same line as him. And a little bit of slippage, but 
you just keep some momentum up and really doesn't have much of a problem. Yeah, I think a true mechanical locker um, or even a G80 like Case has is honestly a little bit of a better option. You would think that each wheel having its own motor, it could really efficiently send power to where it needs to go, but I don't find that that's always the case. You still need to kind of give it a lot of extra throttle and let things spin up a little bit for this all wheel drive system to figure itself out, but still pretty easy to drive off road and really comfortable. This air suspension just kind of floats you down the trail and uh, yeah, not really much to complain about. Our final obstacle here is what we call the sawtooth. This is a test of breakover angle and basically what we try to do is go as far left on this feature as we can without bottoming out the frame because it gets harder the further left you go. So let's see who does better. Now, as I previously mentioned, this truck does not have really any skid plates underneath. So I certainly don't want to bottom out this truck very hard on this feature. It's funny actually, a little behind the scenes. Andre does not like this sawtooth feature. I wonder if it's because his truck doesn't have any skid plates. I'm also right now fighting the one pedal driving system on this truck, which uh, is not really helping me at the moment. Sometimes it's nice, but right now I just wish I had old school control over what the truck was doing. How am I looking down there? You're getting very close. Yeah? Keep coming, inch forward. Yep. Right? See? One pedal drive. Well, uh, it feels like you're over it. Oh, nope, you're not over it. Should I keep going forward or? Hold on. Yeah, inch forward, you're just sitting on the frame. Okay, frame is yeah. fine. All right, well, we just touched ever so slightly there. I think that's your spot. So that's pretty much my it. spot. Yeah, let's go ahead and mark that. Yeah, so again, uh, one pedal drive, not always my favorite thing in a situation like that. Uh, I just, you know, when it finally releases the brake and lets you progress forward, sometimes it's a bit like a jack in the box. You're not really expecting it to. All right, so I'll take this rock here. I'm gonna put it right there. So we've got this nice flat edge of the rock lined up with the outside of the tire. We'll go back into our highest air suspension setting Give it a second to jack itself all the way up. Obviously you want as much clearance as possible. Keep going, you still got a good bit of space. Yeah, I think uh, you might end up needing to take a more aggressive line. Case, this is so hard to inch forward smoothly. Yes, so was that with the one pedal drive. You're pretty close, and you're right about on my line. As you can see there, I would say back up a little bit, take the front end maybe a foot over further. Cool. How's that right there? Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, if you can, creep forward. It's pretty close. You're like, oh my god. You're like an eighth of an inch off the rock. Crawling forward. I think, I think you're good. Yeah? And, uh, and you're coming up right on my rock. Now, I mean, you could scoot the front end further over, but you were pretty much right there. Yeah, you were millimeters off the rock. So it seems like their brake over, at least as, as measured by the sawtooth, is pretty similar. Yeah, and I'm jacked up all the way right now. So. Yeah, which actually is uh, pretty good because this Rivian is not a short vehicle. No, so. I mean, we haven't talked about size yet, actually, which is a good point. A lot of people kind of have a hard time figuring out where this Rivian sits. That Colorado, obviously a mid-sized truck. 
This is somewhere between a midsize and a full-size truck. It's definitely bigger than that Colorado, but not quite as big as like an F-150 or a Silverado 1500. Yeah, but it's not a small truck. So, no, it's big. Yeah, the fact that it can air up to a point where it can get the same brake over as that, because a lot of this comes down to wheelbase, it's pretty good. Yeah. So Alex, if it were up to you, which of these two trucks would you pick if it were your money? You know, as much of a tech nerd as I am, and as much as I love that Rivian, I would go with the Colorado. The Rivian speaks to me in every way imaginable. I love the screens, I love all the modes, I love playing with everything, but the Colorado definitely handled a little better out on the trail, and it's less than half the price. Yeah, no doubt, really good value with the Colorado, especially, well, as far as new trucks go at least, uh, especially out here on the trail. I think it proved one of the things that it's good at, which is being small and light and nimble. But honestly, if it were up to me for an all-around truck, I would pick the Rivian because, you know, it's not just about off-roading. That's a truck that's got 900 almost horsepower, something that you can beat most, most performance cars in a drag race with air suspension you can pull things the rivian just does a lot that's cool i know it's a lot of money we're we're talking uh dream vehicles here but if i had to pick between the two and i could afford both i definitely want the yeah. rivian i love the rivian i agree with you it's an awesome truck i can't afford the rivian <laughs> so there you go two awesome off-road trucks check out all tfl.com if you want to see more from both of these we have lots more and see you guys in the next video